Give me a hug. It's like hugging Jesus. <laughs> yep. What's wrong with it? Okay. Right now in the name of Jesus. I come in every herniated disc. Bulging disc. To herniate bulge no more. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now I command everyone to slip back in place. That was it right there in the name of Jesus. Jesus, straighten the spine right now in the name of Jesus. Back be totally healed. All pain, go. Jesus, now bend over and touch your toes. Bend over and touch your toes. Come on, all the way. All the way. Woo! Totally gone. A little still there. You think it is? You can't find it? Can't find it, can you? <laughs> keep looking for it. <laughs> Come on, keep looking for it. Do something more. Do something drastic. Come on, spin all the way around. Do something drastic. Come on. A little bit? Okay, here's what I want you to do. Sit down in that chair right there. You ever grew a leg out? You want to learn how? Okay. So somebody put a towel over her legs. You're going to sit down. I'm going I'm to show you something. Anybody can do this because you're a king. Okay, get down there. Stick your feet out. You ever been a chiropractor? Okay, what do they usually tell you? One leg shorter than the other, right? Which leg shorter than the other? So, so what we do is we do this. You good? Okay, we're going to turn them. Okay, your right leg is shorter than your left leg. See that? You know that? Okay. So what you're going to do, you can do it. You're going to command that right leg to grow in the name of Jesus. The right leg. Uh, right leg, I command you to go in the name of Jesus. <laughs> 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 Get up and check it. You felt that. You've seen that. <laughs> Every lie of the enemy, every attack of the enemy, I command you to go. Get up and check it. Bend over and touch your toes. Loosen her. Spirit of dizziness, spirit of infirmity, go. Jesus. Loosen her right now. No more dizziness, no more falling down. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. I don't want to live like that no more. I want to be happy. Okay. Miss Dawn, come here. This is Miss Giggles. So Miss Giggles is going to hug you, and it's contagious. So just fill them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. She says she wants to be happy. Jesus. I always say we can do it. I see that girl right here in front of my eyes. And you know what? God's been giving me a vision of a guy that's on a wheelchair out here. I've seen his leg grow and his foot come back up. Because his leg is cut all the way up here. And I told him, come to the house of the Lord. Come, just come in here. And he told me that he's in shorts. He don't want to come in. He, he, he don't catch it. He used to be in God's path, and he drifted away. He said, I know God has a purpose in my life. And that's the purpose. I just was, You know, this morning I was asking, I was telling God, God, in, in 2010 we were in Texas, and a man was about to die, and they called a family, and they called me to come and pray with him. And we prayed with him. And we were praying, and I said, God, it's for your glory. If you lift him up or he dies, it's for your glory, God. 
And that man stood up and looked at me and said, he said, we're going to rejoice. And I just started crying. And I was telling God this morning, I said, God, if you did that like 10, 11 years ago, God, why aren't you doing it right now, God? And God gave me some things for me to be obedient. And I've been obedient. And believe me, this week has been so hard. But when I keep being obedient to God, man, this <laughs> I just said, Wednesday night. Yeah. <laughs> and look, look at your hands. Your hands were done for, to do miracles, signs, and wonders. As I was praising God, I said, Tell my people to, when they look themselves in the mirror, you're seeing Jesus. You're seeing Jesus. He's inside of every single one of us. Imagine if we go and do all this out there, man. The world is so lost. And I'm sorry I said, man. <laughs> she always tells me. But, man. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. See, the miracle just ain't for them. It's for you, too. When you learn you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Jesus. Jesus. If you are a widow struggling with... <laughs> jump up and run. If you're a widow struggling with the death of a loved one or your husband, that's you besides her. Anybody else in here? Anybody here struggling with the death of a loved one? Yeah, see, I knew. I didn't know you was in here. Come up here. Jesus. 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 Just lift your hands to heaven. Give me a hug first. Is that okay? Mm. Fill her, Lord. <laughs> Fill her, Lord. Let rivers of living water flow out of her belly. That's it. Rivers. That's it. Come on. Rivers. 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 Just receive it. Jesus. It's yours. Jesus. Jesus. Come on. Just let that river flow. Just open your mouth. That's it right there. That's it. Come on, let it flow. Come on, you got it. Just let it flow. That's yours. That's it. She, you've been crying out for it. It's yours right there. It's the name of Jesus. Fill. Fill her, Lord. Fire. Come on, let it flow. Come on, don't be ashamed of it. Come on. Fill. River, 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 river. We break that dam. Let that river flow right now in the name of Jesus. Never the same, Lord. Never the same. Never the same. Let the fire of God come upon her and burn out, Lord, everything that ain't of you. Right now in the name. Feel. Jesus. 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 Both of you, come on. Jesus. Who, me? Lift your hands to heaven. Come on. Jesus. Never the same. Filler. Complete freedom. Free. <laughs> that willingness, that hunger for the things of the world. God's putting in you a hunger and a willingness for his righteousness. Fill. Jesus. Fire. Jesus. Freedom. Free. 
Free. Jesus. Let her go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Fire of God. Top of his head, soles of his feet. That's it. Jesus. 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 The anointing will destroy every yoke of bondage, every lie of the enemy. Jesus. Go. No more. No more. No more. Fill them with your righteousness and fire. That's it. That's the power of God. It's all over you. Jesus. More. Shake them to his core, Lord. More. 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 Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Spirit of infirmity. Go. Jesus. Go. Every last one of you. Loosen him right now. Jesus. Up and out. Go. Now. Out. Go. Burn it out. Go. Jesus. Fire. Fire of heaven. Fire of God. Top of his head. Soles of his feet. Fire. Never the same. Jesus. Shake him, Lord. Shake him, Lord. Shake him, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. You know, one right next to you, bring them. Bring your friends. Glory of God. That's it. More. More. Jesus. You were a friend? Her husband? Jesus. Fire of heaven, Lord, as it burns on the inside of him. Turn up the heat. Jesus, more. More. That's it. Jesus. Free. No more bill. No more bill. All Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fill. Fill him. Fill him. Fill him. Fill. Like electricity going through his body. Right now in the name of Jesus. From his fingertips to his toes. Right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. The anointing. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Remember your whole road there, Damon. Yeah, all four of you. Come on. Why me? Because God said so. <coughs> Come up here and lift your hands to heaven. Come on, each one of you. You knew I was going to find a way? <laughs> Ain't got nothing to do with me, buddy. Ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got to do with God. I'll do what God says. Jesus. He, nothing. Right. <laughs> you know how to surrender? Uh, no. No? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. You just lift your hands. Lord Jesus, touch him right now, Lord. He may not understand it. He can't wrap his mind around it, his eyes around it. He don't understand what's going on. He don't understand about it, Lord. But you love him. You love him, Lord. So right now, Lord, I ask you to wrap your arms around him right now with perfect love, perfect peace. Right now, Lord, as he leaves this place never the same. As we break every lie of the enemy, we cancel every assignment of the enemy. Let your presence come upon him right now in the name of Jesus. Show him how much you love him right now. 
that nothing else matters. All the stuff he's been chasing in this world doesn't matter, Lord. He just needs to put his eyes on you and chase after you, Lord. So give him that encounter he deserves. Give him that inheritance he deserves. Fill him with your presence and your fire. Right now in the name of Jesus. Fill him, Lord. Never the same. Never the same, Lord. All it takes is one touch, one encounter, Lord, with you. Let your presence come upon them. Fill them. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I thank you for each and every one of these people you send forth, Lord, to do your will, to do your perfect will, to walk in your perfect love, to walk in your perfect peace. Same anointing you put on me, Lord, put on them to go heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, Lord, to walk in your power. But most importantly, Lord, to walk in your love. Right now in the name of Jesus, let them leave here never the same. Put that hunger and thirst in them for more of you where nothing else matters. That he won't look to the left, he won't look to the right, but he put his eyes on you. We thank you for that encounter. We thank you for the fire, God. Let it burn on the inside of him for more of you like a raging fire. Nothing else matters but you, where he can be the perfect example, not only to his wife, kids, but to the neighbors, the people that he used to hang around with. And they'll see the glory of God on and in his life. We thank you for it. Jesus, fill. Fill him, Lord. Peace above all understanding. You've been praying for peace. The Lord says, you got it right now. It's yours. Just receive it. Jesus, that's it. It's called peace above all understanding. Right now. Your perfect love, your perfect peace. Fill her, Lord. yours just receive it just breathe it in take a deep breath Jesus feel fire fire no more running you'll run straight towards me you'll run straight to the fire I'm anointing you to do great things Jesus Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. More, Lord, more. That's it, more, 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 more. Never the same, Lord, never the same, never the same, never the same. You got to get it sooner or later. They, they ain't going to leave till you get it. That's it. Come on, just get it. Come on, it's yours. Get it. Jesus. Jesus. They're persistent. Holy Ghost is persistent. He loves you and they love you that much. They won't give up till you get it. It took nothing. That's it. That's his name, Jesus. Come on. Let all that hurt and pain go. It's not yours. Let it go. Jesus. 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 Jesus, freedom, 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 
freedom. He he ha ha. Well, if you knew it, you should already had it before I got to you. It's his turn. Fill him, Lord, right now, the fire of heaven, fire of God, top of his head, soles of his feet. Jesus. Fill <laughs> 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 him, Lord, more, more, more. That's it, more, more. 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 Giggles. You've been praying for somebody? <laughs> he needs it. <laughs> Fill him. Does he need it? <laughs> You're outnumbered, buddy. Does he need it? <laughs> There's always more, more, more. Fill them, Lord, more. I break every dam. I break every wall, everything, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus, fill them, Lord. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your joy. Fill them right now. Unresistible. Let that river, that's it, river of living water. Look at that river. That's it. It broke. That dam just broke. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let it flow. Come on. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Even the Hispanics guy get it. He he ha ha. <laughs> hey, say he he ha ha in Spanish. <laughs> hey, hey, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Miss Anna said, I, 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 I. That's some South African Holy Ghost. Come on, his goodness has been running after you. He's God's tired of running after you. Just stop. <laughs> Let him get a hold of you. That's it. <laughs> Come here, Giggles 1, Giggles 2. And now we got Giggles Jr. That's G Giggles in law. Lay your hands on him. <laughs> She's going to give him that smack anointing. <laughs> Usually he don't laugh at it, though. <laughs> Fire. That's it. Fire, God. Fire. 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 Turn it up, Lord. Fire. Fire. Yes, never the same. 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 Feel. That's it. Feel. 
feel. <laughs> Jeez. The whole family, Lord, get them all. Get them all. Get them all. I ain't leaving till you get it all, bud. <laughs> His name is God. You can say, oh, my God. It works. You'll be rolling on the floor for too long. She ain't going nowhere. This is the day she's been praying for. Never the same. 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 Jesus, Jesus. Heard that I, I, I one over there. Uh, no, you're back over here. I need y'all on assignment over here. This one over here needs some. Y'all are on assignment. Y'all come. I feel like hmm? peace. One of my goals as a pastor is usually to teach. <laughs> but sometimes the Holy Ghost is the greatest teacher ever. What he can do in one second, it might take me years to do. Because the thing we're crying out for falls into his category, which the world calls supernatural, but really just natural to him. Because people hold on and struggle with things that they don't have to. 
You got heel with his leg. <laughs> Nick. <laughs> See, I told you, that's that, that's that South African Holy Ghost. Come on, let it go. Ay, 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 ay. This one. Fill them, Lord. Fill. Fire. 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 It, it's a team effort. Did you get it yet? Not yet? Keep pouring. We don't try around here. We just do it. She's crying. Oh, okay. Jesus. That morning and turning into joy. Still morning. So she can have joy. Jesus. Keep going. This is my wife, for y'all that don't know that. <laughs> Keep moving. <laughs> Do I need to send the ladies over here to you? <laughs> you come sit right here. Yeah. yeah, that's what we need. Same prayer I pray. <laughs> you gotta have joy. Can't breathe? Okay. <laughs> 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 he won't kill you, I promise. <laughs> you need to trust in him. Phil. Phil. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory a Dios. Fuego a Dios. Fuego. Fuego, feel your presence. Feel, feel, feel. Never the same, Lord. Your presence come upon her. Right now in the name of Jesus. That's it right there. Power of God. Jesus. Jesus. It's not for us to figure out. It's not for us to understand. Jesus. Feel him, Lord.
that no longer they'll put their eyes on man or a church or religion, Lord, they'll put their eyes on you, Lord. Let them have that encounter they need today, right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them with your fire. Put that fire in the side of them. Hunger and thirst for your righteousness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Show them there's more. More, Lord. More. 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 Jesus. 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 Yeah? Phil <laughs> Lord. Double dose. Double shot. Feel. Overflow. Who in here would say, I need this? Come on, lift your hands to heaven. Come on, you need it. Come on. Jesus. Jesus, fill them. Just lift both hands to heaven and get it. Come on, to receive it. It's like a funnel. Refill. Fill. Fill. Fire. Double dose. Double portion. There you go. There we go. Let that river flow. That river flow. More. 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 We're going to shake it out of you. More. 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 Come on, you ain't laughed in a long time. Come on, give a double. Come on, you need more of it. More. More. <laughs> Jesus. Fill. Fill her up, Lord. Overflow. Overflow. More. 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 Jesus, Jesus, fire of God, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus. Everybody at one time, come on, he, he, ha, ha, he, he, ha, ha. It's not hard to do. Jesus, fill them, Lord. The anointing come upon them. Fill them. Fill. 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 Jesus. When you point with your finger one way, it comes back three times. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. You're good, all right. Feel. Fire. Jesus. 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 Y'all, too, put your hands on Grandma. She needs it. She's got to deal with me also. You still got it? You get to take it home, which is free. No extra charge. Jesus. 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 Fire. He says you need it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, God is good. And all the time, He is good. We have to be, we should be seeing lives changed on a daily basis. The only one can do that is the Holy Spirit. We have to yield to Him. We have to trust in Him. We have to believe in Him. We s sing songs. We say prayers. But in natural, we truly don't believe them. We sang the first one. He said pretty much, you go before me. So he does. He's always goes before you. He's behind you. He's beside you. He's all around you at all times. Do but we trust in that. We trust in more what we see than what he says. We have faith more in the natural than we do what the world calls a supernatural him. We have to wrap our minds around he created the heavens and the earth. All within split seconds. Let there be light. Light be. Created man, created all, everything. He'd done that with a simplicity of just speaking, and that was it. And we doubt him in every fiber of our being. We question him almost every day. Why? Because we really don't know him. You have to take the time to get to know him. You have to get the time to spend time with him. Because if you look to me, you're going to be disappointed. Because you're going to think, I have your answer. Why don't Pastor Bobby do this? Pastor, but it ain't about Pastor Bobby. It's about you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's all you need. You don't need my job to teach you, train you, equip you, and show you how to be the example. But besides that, you don't need to Pastor Bobby lay hands on you. Need, I need you, God. I need you, perfect Father. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you. Should be your cry out. Because... The Bible says God's no respecter of person, and he's not. But he is a respecter of faith. You need to get that. He's not a respecter of person, but he is a respecter of faith. And the Bible says it takes faith to please God. So my question is, are we really pleasing God, or are we just going to him as a magic genie wishing well? Throw a quarter in and make a wish and hope that he does it. No, it don't work that way. He's a perfect father. He loves you. You may not understand the trials, tribulations, what you're going through, but you have to understand he's there. Just like the three Hebrew children in the fire, he was there. They were actually in the fire. They turned it up seven times hotter to where everybody around them melted, and God, God didn't allow anybody to touch them. So you have to understand, you're going to have a life of trials, tribulations. You're going to have a life of in the fire. You're going to have a life of storms. But you have to understand he's with you in that storm. To where he don't mind it. You go, Lord, I don't understand it. I don't know why this is happening, but I trust you. I worship you. I praise you. I honor you. A lot of people have been taught wrong through religion and churches and all this stuff. And they go through a lot of nonsense they don't have to go through. And 
I'm not going to get into that this morning, but one of them is like they want to do spiritual warfare. Every time they're being attacked, they want to attack the enemy and rebuke the enemy and rebuke this. And I used this um, element to them and talking to them. I said, if the enemy comes in the room and all he wants to do is gossip and you gossip back, back with them, how long they're going to stay? Or a person. If a person comes in the room, do you know they're a gossiper and they gossip? And as long as you gossip with them, they'll stay there all day, right? Yes, sir. Once you start praising Jesus and talking to Jesus, what happens? They're going to leave. So when the enemy comes, lies to you, whispers you trial, tribulation, how do you get him to leave? We're so busy trying to rebuke the devil, run the devil off, tell him where to go, tell him this, tell him that. If you'll just praise Jesus, he'll go. He don't want to be around that. He don't want to hear that. It's like when people come to you, they come to me. They want to, they want to tell me their poor, pitiful selves. And because they've been in religious churches and other pastors said and listen, they expect me to listen. I don't listen. I'll listen to a little bit. But I'm going to go, okay, what have you done to change what you're doing? What have you done to apply Jesus? Instead of let's sit here and talk about all your problems, what you've done your whole life, let's talk about Jesus. Because the problem is we focus on our issues, our problems, our addiction, the lies, the enemy, all this stuff all day long, and he loves it. It's the reason why, you know, people go to AA. They talk about their issues and their problems. The first thing they do is, I'm an addict. Well, there's your first problem. I'm a child of God. That's your identity. That's who you are. Your problem and your issue is not make you who you are. The word of God, your father, makes you who you are. We are children of the most high God. And from that, we deserve an inheritance. We have an inheritance. It's ours. And we just got to learn to worship him and honor him and praise him. But you have to understand there is a Holy Spirit. Most churches, most people won't teach you about. There is a Holy Spirit. He's alive, breathing, and well on this earth. It's the manifested presence of God. It's what you see here this morning. It's God on earth. And he works through us and in us. And he wants to be known. He wants to set the captives free. He wants to do miracle signs and wonders. He wants to do this. But if we just wash them away and don't pay no attention to them, just because it looks you're in church, oh, why are they laughing? It's called joy of the Lord. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Even in the natural, when we weren't saved, how many like going to a comedy hour or watching a funny movie? Why? Because it's good for the soul. Why? That's called joy of the Lord. We all need it. He says, I come to give you life and life more abundant. If you're steady, stuck on your issue and your problem, you will not have life and life more abundant. You know, the, the devil's the author of confusion. So the easy way is just confuse him. So just start laughing. It's that easy. Come home, your husband, your wife's in a bad mood. Just laugh. That'd irritate them, but it, it, uh, why are you laughing? Because you don't make me. You don't make my day. He does. But it aggravates the enemy. The tools of the Bible, the weapons of our warfare are easy. Just be love. Be full of the Holy Spirit. Be full of joy. Be full of life. Most people spend their whole lives fighting the devil. When it's not even yours, victory is yours. Victory is now. And in Scripture, I'm going to go back and start. These are my notes from last week. We're still on the first couple of verses. But Acts 19, 1 through 6. It says, while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul took a route through the interior and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He asked them, do you receive, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you came to believe? Here's most Christians. We've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. This is scripture. Then he said, what baptism did you receive? They answered, John's baptism, Paul explained. John baptized you. With a baptism by which people showed they were changing. I want you to know this. John baptized with a baptism by which people showed they were changing their hearts and lives. 
It was a baptism that told people about the one who was coming after him. This is the one in whom they were to believe. This is Jesus. After they listened to Paul, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they became speaking in other languages and prophesying. Yeah, that's right, Jesus. Now I want to jump one more, just to clarify that. Luke 3.16 says this, this is John speaking. John responded to them all saying, As for me, I baptize you with water, but he is coming who is mightier than I. I am not fit to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand and thoroughly clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. How you do that? Fire. Fire is good and fire is bad. You have to learn to control fire. Some are controlled too much. California is a good example. They have wildfires all the time. Why? Because they want it their way. They won't allow timbers in there. They won't allow them to log them. They won't allow them to do controlled burns, which is good. Fire is good if used correct way. Fire is bad. Lightning hits. They haven't controlled their environment. I want you all to get this. They don't control their environment. They don't control the circumstance. So what happens with forest fires in California? Years and years of trash and leaves and problems and this, they allow to build up and build up and build up and build up. What do we do? Same exact thing. And all of a sudden, we, we don't understand what's going on, but the fire of God comes, and it hurts. Why? Because we haven't dealt with them issues. We haven't dealt with them pains. We haven't dealt with all that stuff that ain't even really yours. But if we'll allow God in before all that starts, a little bit of leaves fall on the ground, we come in, we do a control burn. God, come in, take out all the issues, all the problems, burn out me of me everything that ain't of you. And allow him purify us. So then when the next time comes, it does that. So when all hell comes all at one time, you don't have a big forest fire. Why? Because you've been maintaining everything God's been giving you, everything the enemy's throwing at you, you're releasing it to God. You're allowing him, the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him. You're casting all these issues, all these cares that you've been carrying on. And you wonder why you got a bunch of monkeys on your back. You wonder why you stooped over walking like this. Ain't got to do with your figures. Got to do with all the stuff you've been trying to carry. And it's not yours to carry. They're not your problems. They're issues. Revelation 12, 11 says this. Actually, I'm going to go back to 10. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God. That's all available to you. Salvation, power, kingdom of God. And the authority of Christ has come. For the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down, who he accuses them before our God day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, and because of the word of their testimony. And here's the most important one. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. How many Christians today that call themselves Christians, soon as death comes, they're scared to death? It's not biblical. Because they truly don't believe in heaven. They truly never had an encounter with Jesus. They never truly surrendered their life. They're built up their forest full of junk. And that's all they see is these weeds and all these old stuff and their past. All this stuff built up. That's all they can focus on to see because that's around them. And all of a sudden, the enemy sees all that built up. So all of a sudden, he sends a big fire. And all of a sudden, we wonder why we're going through all this hell. It's because, number one, you have allowed it. Because the Bible calls us kings, lords, high priests. In that gives us power and authority. We have power and authority to cast things down. We have power and authority to bring heaven to earth. Most Christians pray for peace. It's yours. But you don't speak it. 
Lord, give me peace. Make zero sense to him. You confuse him. He's like, what are you talking about? I've already given you peace. Why are you asking for me something that's yours? The Bible even tells, Jesus told disciples, when you walk into a city, you walk in the house, go peace, and there will be peace. And if they don't want it, this is how much control you have in the kingdom. And if they don't want it, they receive it. He says, take the peace back with you. Then he says, shake the dust off your feet. If you don't want it, oh well. You can live in this big fire that's coming. And obviously there's an eternal fire. It's a choice we all get to make. But it's a lot easier to grab a hold of what we have now, power and authority, and surrender your life to Jesus. People say, I don't know what surrender is. Surrender is give it all up. Don't raise your hands, but how many of us been in jail? When you go there, they take everything from you, right? They don't leave you with a cell phone. They don't leave you with nothing. They take everything that's yours, and they give you a new set of clothes, right? Kind of like the kingdom of God. He wants to take everything from you. Stand up. You. They want to give you an orange jumpsuit. That's all you get. So what happens when you go to jail, they strip everything from you, right? They give you an orange suit. Why do they give you an orange suit? That's your new identity. People see an orange suit, you know, how many know exactly what that is? Because that's your new identity. So God wants to come. He wants you to surrender it all. He wants to give you a new suit. Robe of righteousness. And he, won't, and he wants to crown you. He wants to give you the kingdom. And that's your identity. And that's where we got to walk in. But the only way you'll walk in that is you got to cast all fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out all fear. Fear of your life. To where who cares whether I step over eternity now or 100 years from now. It don't matter. I'm ready to go. It's not a message that's preached in a lot of churches. So they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb. That we overcame the enemy because of what Jesus did on the cross. The blood of the Lamb. By his stripes we were healed. Death, burial, and the resurrection. That's how we overcame him. Then also we have come from him by the word of our testimony. Your testimony will change more people's lives than you trying to memorize scripture. So many people are trying to memorize scripture and go to Bible school and go to this. No, just tell them what Jesus has done in your life. Tell them about the old you, the old ways, the old things, and let them see the glory of God, the light on the hill, everything that you are in you. They say, man, I see a difference. How many of y'all been here long enough that people see you now? They go, I've seen a difference in you. Why? Let your light so shine. That's your identity. That's who you are. But you got to get to where Luke 9, 23 says, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. All throughout Christianity, I watch it in churches, they all take pieces of the scripture out of there. Every Christian wants to pick up their cross and follow Jesus, but they don't deny themselves. And they wonder why every time they get in a situation, oh, help me, Lord, oh, help me. He's already done everything he's going to do. He went before you, he's behind you, he's beside you, he's everywhere. But they're like bodyguards. We do have angels around us on assignment. And most of them are bored. They're bored, this is my opinion, it's not scripture, and I think they're sad. In a sense, they sit there and they're watching, they're, they're just like this in a natural. They've been paid to be bodyguards, but they've been paid to obey your voice and what you tell them in the natural. So you got paid bodyguards around you every day, okay? And they're watching you get beat up day after day because of your words. Oh, I got off on the wrong side of the bed. Today ain't going to be a good day. Oh, the sun didn't line with the moon, and this didn't line with this and that and this, and it's just going to be one of them days. And because we speak that, the enemy just steady beats us up. When Jesus said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly, he said, I'm giving you power, I've given you authority, I've given you a mouth to speak things into existence, to speak life into existence. To say, man, today, I don't care if you woke up and your spouse cussed at you, slapped you, 
whatever they've done. It don't matter. But you go, man, today's going to be an amazing day. Today's going to be an awesome day. I thank you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. I honor you, Jesus. I glorify you, Jesus. And it'll be that. Because you will make that. And because you make it, God will back it up. And we have to get to that point to where life's not about us. To where we don't love our life unto death. To where we truly trust there is a Holy Spirit here on earth. Had a leg grow out this morning. How can you naturally wrap your mind around that? Cannot. People say, oh, they're freaks, they're this, they're that, there's no way that just happened. How many just witnessed that happen? It's real. I've seen countless, I can hundreds. And that just shows you the power you have in your mouth. If we can say, leg grow out in the name of Jesus, and it grows, how much do you think your body responds when you go, I'm sick? I don't feel good. I have a headache. I'm depressed. I'm sad. Same power. Two different gods. You got God Almighty, the great I am. Then the Bible says you got a God of this earth, which is Satan. Whatever you're going to speak, that one's going to back it up. Either God will back it, or Satan and his cohorts will back it. Either God and his angels will back it, or opposite. So we have to learn to speak life. And life more abundant. And we have to get to where if I pass on, who cares? Because the Bible says we're aliens. We're just passing through. But most people don't believe that. They think this is the only, even Christians, even though they believe in heaven and say, I'm going to heaven, they truly don't believe it because some, some kind of something happens in the world, whether it's a sickness, disease, plague, World War VI, whatever it is, all of a sudden, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Well, either God's going to protect me. Or he's going to protect me. He's going to keep me here among his people where I can teach and be a disciple and help people and love on people and change people's lives and be a blessing. Or he's going to take me to heaven and then I just glorify him every second of every day. Doesn't matter to me. I'm happy either way. But we have to get to where we don't love our life unto death. To where nothing else matters but Jesus. Because that's what we were created for. Anything outside of that, you're using it the wrong way. You're taking a hammer, trying to use it as a screwdriver. You'll get more frustrated. How many people have tried it with a different, maybe with a butter knife or something, and you get aggravated and frustrated, right? Because it was never designed for that. And you wonder why your life is so aggravating and frustrating, because what you're trying to do, what you're trying to carry, what you're trying to fix or, here's a better one, what you're trying to control was not yours. You were created to worship him, praise him, honor him, glorify him, and be obedient to him. Anytime you get outside of that, you're going to struggle. It's that simple. So we have to get to where we don't love our life unto death. Some of y'all don't know this. It's in the last month, we've had three people go to heaven in this place. And the latest one I told you about is Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley, you sit right there. Miss Shirley Woods. Miss Shirley, come to come to this ministry. Come to us. Probably is it a year been that long? Time time flies. She's been a year, but she probably come to me about. Um, who didn't know that? You didn't know that? Okay. So Miss Shirley, is Isaac or? They're not here. Okay. Miss Shirley used to sit in that last row right there. And she would laugh and joy and go home drunk. But she come to me about six months ago. And she said, I need to, I want to sit down and I want to talk to you. I said, okay. So we sat down. And I love her to death. I love all people. But I get the same exact question almost all throughout what I do here and what we do at the church. She says, you know, I feel like I want to be, in, I know I've been in ministry my whole life. I've been in ministry. I want to know what part I can play. Do I have a place, a part in this ministry? I said, yes, ma'am, we all do. I said, but ain't what you think it is. So I said, let me do this. I said, you come sit for at least a year and Listen. Then come back to me with that same question. Then we'll, I'll answer it. It's okay. So she started coming. Joy of the Lord would hit her. 
fire God would hit her. And the number one thing that she loved the best was I would hug her. And her answer or comment was this. She says, I didn't know it, but I was broken. But when you come up to hug me, it was like God just put me all back together. But then I would take control over things. Then I would come back to you and you hug me again. And you, it was like God was making me whole. And as Christians and believers of American society, we think we want to do ministry. We think we got to figure it out. We think this, we think that. And that's the reason why the Holy Spirit, I'm letting the Holy Spirit do what he does, is he'll show us we ain't got nothing figured out. Whole different ball game when he shows up. He'll show you the hurts, the brokenness. That's the reason why a lot of times I pray for people, joy of the Lord hit them, and all of a sudden they'll start crying. Because they understand, hey, I'm broken. Hey, I understand I need fixed. But you have to understand, you have 100%, 24 hours, every second of access to him. And with that access, 24 hours a day, it only takes a mini second, whatever, he can fix you. But we have to allow him to do what he does. We allow him to take control of our lives. We got to allow him to come in and have a place. Because we think just because we're in a church, we have a pulpit, we're doing Sunday school, we're doing this, that we're part of the kingdom. And most of the time, you're not. And that's what after about a month of it, she come to me and she says, now I understand why you wanted me to sit. Because we think we got life figured out. We think because, and the reason why we think that is because that's 99.9% .9 of what we see. Even in churches. Even people who call them Christians, all we see is our struggles and battles and please pray for me and pray for this. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. Well, quit. You know, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. He had to, he was going through it. We tell the story of it, but you don't hear all, you don't, we don't hear him complaining about it. All we hear about is he worshiped Jesus. He worshiped God. When the storms and the waves come and Jesus and the disciples are in a boat, all the disciples on them got scared, fear. They've been with Jesus now for a year or two. And all of a sudden, fear come upon them. Why? Because they thought they were going to die. And the man who gives them life and life abundant is right with them. And what is he doing? Sleeping in the boat. You may not know how to deal with it. You may not know how to figure things out. Sometimes you might need to go sleep. Go take a nap. Naps are good. Amen. Amen. Come on. I mean, ain't nothing better than a good old nap. I'm going to tell you all a secret. Y'all don't know this. Some of y'all do. So people follow me on Facebook all the time. They say, man, you need to slow down. You do way too much. You need to rest. You need to do this. You need that. Why do they perceive that? Because that's the only, only thing I allow them to see. I don't let people see in my private life. I don't let people when I go maybe slip off and do something or, you know, when I, when I say that, I have an airboat. I go, I love the outdoors. I ride. I have things. And I spend time with my family. We go do things. What, I don't let people know that. They don't, they don't need to. But the only thing they see of me is what I do. Ministry, not, and I call it, it ain't ministry. It's kingdom. Kingdom, 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 kingdom. They say, you need to rest. Well, they don't know about 2 o'clock sometimes I slip out. So I, ain't, I don't have to answer nobody. To my wife, but she knows where I'm coming at two o'clock, so I'm coming in. She said, oh, it's nap time, ain't it? I said, Yep. And I'm slide on the couch. Some, she says, You need to. And sometimes it's. And the bad thing is, I do. I leave this thing on almost 24 hours a day. It went off at. One, twelve fifty-two a.m. Here's what it says. So this stays on twenty-four hours a day, but I hear it because sometimes I get calls. Pastor Arnolfo calls me at four thirty in the morning because <laughs> he can't get in one of our trucks. He's supposed to be in Fort Myers. Then I had the phone on vibrate, so here, I'm gonna back up. So me and Junior drove to Fort Myers. We took two trucks, two trailers to Fort Myers. It should have been about not Fort Myers, Louisiana. It's all the same. 
So we went to a little town called Metairie, just south of New Orleans, with a church. We took two trucks full of supplies, drove, drove left here Wednesday night. Reason why I didn't preach Wednesday night, I left here Wednesday night. And the reason why I don't tell people I preach Wednesday night because they think they need to come hear me, and if I don't come, they don't show up. So I don't tell you where I'm going. Just say it. So, end up leaving. Um, we drove about five, six hours, got a hotel, slept, got up the next morning, drove into New Orleans, trying to figure out how this thing's going to work the whole way. Finally, we got there, so you know what? I'm just going to leave a truck, a tra- two trailers truck. We'll come back and get it later. Me and him will drive back because it's a long drive, a lot. I mean, especially if we were stuck in traffic probably three to four hours, just bumper, 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 and uh, which makes for a long day. So on the way home, I said, here's what you will do. I'll, I'll get in the I'll drive, you rest, then once you get rested, you'll drive, I'll, re- I'll rest back and forth. And we did that, and we got home about 3.30 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Finally got a shower and sleep at 3.30, good, just great sleep, man, this is awesome and amazing, 5.30, brrr, phone ring. Actually, I'm sorry, the phone didn't ring. 4, 5.30, what time was it? A quarter to 5. I'm sitting there, I don't hear my phone ring, I'm in bed, dead asleep, I hear... In my bedroom. But the only good thing is I know what that is because it happened a year ago <laughs> when Beaver was out here. Beaver's an awesome driver. And I, y'all seen my Facebook post. And he um, he couldn't get the semi started one morning at 4 in the morning. So he, he, he knew we had to go pick up a load. We had to do a delivery. So he's driving around our property trying to figure out. He didn't know where I live at. He's trying to figure out where I live at. My brother's looking out his window because we live, we live on 30 acres. It's my brother's house, my mom and dad and me and he's driving through the property trying to figure out whose house is which well, my brother's upstairs in his bedroom window at five in the morning sees people driving around our property he gets his pistol goes out there you get shot you'll be careful so he pulls up and um my brother's like finally got his beaver so my brother pulls over and now he's got my headlights in my bedroom window so it's five in the morning my phone's ringing now i finally roll over and my phone's ringing, and it's my daughter, which my daughter's in the bedroom next door. So I'm going, okay, what in the world's going on here? Why is my daughter calling me at 5 in the morning? Well, she's scared because somebody's knocking on the window. So now I've grabbed my pistol, and I'm walking outside figuring out what's going on. So we're all just a bunch of confusion trying to figure out what's going on. Finally, my brother's calling me. I answer him. He says, hey, Beaver's out here. He's looking for you. So when the knock on the window comes, I figured it was Beaver. So I roll over and look at my phone, beaver missed call, beaver missed call, beaver missed call. But it was actually, Arnolfo was trying to call me before that. But I was having, having such a good sleep that I didn't realize what was going on. So I'm used to it in a sense. His phone stays on, it does it, I'm used to it. So this time his mom was beating on the window at 5 in the morning. Because beaver done figured it out, I call mom, mom lives next door, she'll get wake her up, she'll go knock on the window. So my wife would go to bed last night. She says, have you got all your trucks fixed, all your stuff good <laughs> tonight? So we go to bed, all going to be good. I said, you never know. I said, as far as I know, I said, but it's it's the life I live. I mean, I'm, it's no big deal to me. Why? Because I have joy. Don't matter to me. So at 12.52, I get this. Pastor, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We are so humbled. It is really late, and we are just getting in. We have been serving since 7 a.m. this morning. We have already distributed so many of the items you you all have donated. We were able to send volunteers in the communities today. The reports were dismal. So many people have lost everything. Gas is very scarce, and they can't drive into Homa, so we were able to send volunteers out into the smaller communities and go get them. We are anticipating being in there for several more weeks. We really appreciate your generosity. Please keep us in your prayers during our mission here. So there's a lot of people out there that are need hope. They need this Holy Spirit. They need the anointing. They need to manifest presence of God. So we went in there last week. I sent Beaver in. He's actually on his way back this morning. He just called me again this morning, and um, he's on his way back. But he actually had to drive the full semi loaded around poles and telephone poles off the side of road and ditches, all this stuff to get to these people. And he said when he went across the neighborhood, he said it was a neighborhood probably the size of Janfield Village. Every house was demolished. Everyone in the middle of it was one house, white picket fence, never not a 
every flower, everything was perfect in that yard. Why? They trust in God. Do we trust in God when a storm comes? To me, that's the one perfect example of somebody believe God, I worship you. When the hurricane cat, 150 mile an hour winds are coming, every house is getting destroyed. I guarantee you they were probably sitting there going, Lord, I worship you. I praise you. I honor you. I glorify you. I'm not looking at this storm. All I'm doing is looking at you. Come on. That's the perfect place to where we need to be and trust this Holy Spirit. Where we got to be. We have to be standing on the rock called Jesus. He's our rock. He's our foundation. The only thing that matters. No matter what storm comes, what comes, he's that. He's given us this Holy Spirit who wants to dwell on the inside of you. Let him. Some of y'all felt that this morning. Some of y'all encountered that. It's yours. The Bible says, ask anything in my name according to my will. I read you scripture there. It was scripture. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They were filled. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they all were filled. It's yours to have. It's yours to receive. And when you ask it, the Bible says, when they ask anybody, you shall receive it. You've got it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, pray. when you pray, believe that you received. You've got it. It's yours. If I give you $100, you stick it in your pocket, and you walk going, go around going, man, I'm hungry today. I know I got $100, but I don't want to spend it. And you go hungry for two weeks, it's your fault. If you never reach in your pocket and apply that $100, you'll never do it. So if you never reach in your spirit, man, and you apply that Holy Spirit, you allow him to come out. It may not make sense. It may not do, but it'll make faith. When people get baptized in the Holy Ghost, just let it come out. Let it just make a sound. We had a gentleman this morning. Boom. Never been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Connie's son. Just tired of living addiction, tired of living that. Wanted to get free. I said, do it. And then, shock, ba, 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 just come right up. But we got so many dams, so many blocks. We've been taught wrong the whole, our whole lives. It's the reason why I let the Holy Spirit teach. I read you verses of this Bible. This is what it says. I don't care what man says. This is what the Word of God says. We can do all things. Come on. Through Christ who strengthened us. Amen? Amen. Let's just stand to our feet today. Yes, sir. Well, the opinion part wasn't the angel part. The opinion part was angels are sad. That was my opinion. No, I know we have angels in charge around us. Father. That's 100% fact because it's biblical truth. The opinion part was I think they're sad because we don't use them. They're sitting there going, they're bored, and they're going, we can, this guy's been defeated. He's nothing. He's, I mean, I can stomp on his head right now if you allow me. And, and they're bored, and they're, they're sad because... Not in a bad, sad way. I meant scriptural, but you understand that's my provision of that is what I'm saying is they're sad because, man, you have heaven available to you. And you're not using it because of your mouth, your words, the way you speak. Just start praising Jesus, even in the storm. Let's do that this morning. Let's lift our hands this morning. And I just want you to, we don't need no music, no nothing. I just want you to praise them for about five minutes, a couple minutes, just maybe one or two minutes. It's 12.37, so let's just praise them. For, when that clock hits 12.39, I'll let you know. Let's just praise them. Just honor them. Whatever it is you've been going, don't go through it no more. Just honor him, praise him, or just pray in the Holy Ghost. Well, if you, you only got 30 seconds of honoring him and praising him, thank him, just let your spirit man just flow out of you. Just, just glorify him. Just, we honor you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing us, delivering us, setting free. We glorify your name. We lift your name up on high, Lord. The name above all names, Lord.
we just thank you, Lord. I thank, I can't thank you enough, Lord. I can't thank you enough, Lord, for what you've done, but what you're going to do, Lord. I just glorify your name, Lord. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. I thank you for what you've done in my life, Lord, so I can go touch and change other people's lives, Lord. You've healed me. You delivered me. You set me free, Lord. So now I'll use that same power that was on me to go heal people, deliver people, set people free, Lord. I thank you for this anointing, Lord, that destroys every yoke of bondage, Lord. We just thank you for this anointing, Lord. We thank you for the anointing, which is your manifested presence, Lord. Let your manifest presence always show in me and through me, Lord, where your light so shine in me and through me, Lord. Now my light shines, Lord, because you live in me, Lord. I just thank you for living in me, Lord. Let me be a holy temple full of you, Lord. Let the fire of God burn on the inside of me, Lord. Let the fire of God burn everything out of me that ain't of you. But also let the fire of God burn on me where I'm just a city on a hill full on blaze for you. To where I am that forest fire, Lord. To where I touch and affect everything around me with your fire, your glory, Lord. Lord, just dip me. Pour out your loving kerosene all over me, Lord. And set me on fire. Set me ablaze for you, Lord. To wherever where I go, everything I touch, the fire of God, the presence of God, the glory of God is just amplified and showed to where people can't deny your goodness. People can't deny your presence. People can't deny your love. People can't deny your peace. People can't deny everything that you are, Lord. So we thank you for perfect love, perfect peace in every situation, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we are the fire, that when fire comes, it doesn't bother us, Lord, that we are the fire. We are the fire of God. We are your everything that you create us to be, that we are sons and daughters, Lord, of yours. I thank you that I'm a son and daughter or son of yours. Lord, I thank you. We glorify your name. We lift your name up on high. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Find somebody you don't know.